Welcome to the Heat Treat Podcast, sponsored by Matza, Creo, and Super Systems. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Heat Treat Podcast. Today we have Bob Brock, or my personal friend, Bobby Brock, manager <laughs> of sales from AC Holcroft, joining us to discuss the innovation and IQ technology, or how they call it, UBQ technology, foreigners technology. Uh, we'll dive into what makes this technology unique, its application, and how it's paying the way for more sustainable and efficient heat treatment process. Bob, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Carlos. Nice to see you again, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Bob, you've been uh, working with uh, foreigners uh, for a while. You know, you, yeah. you, you're an engineer, you, you know your stuff, uh, you are product uh, manager of uh, the UBQ or the, the Universal Batch Quench from AFC Holcroft. Can you give mm -hmm. us a little background uh, of yourself and the company you work for? Yeah, right. So I, I've been uh, in this industry for about 34 years. I started out at a competitor. Uh, it's kind of a unique story. After I came out of the service, I uh, was going to college and uh, my dad had a friend that worked at a competitor Uh, furnace company and uh, that's how I got into this business back in the early 90s so, uh, so after that I worked there for a few years and then I went to Holcroft and then at Hol that point uh, I worked in the mechanical engineering department and then we were bought by AFC atmosphere furnace Co company and uh, we moved to Wixom And uh, the rest is history. I've held many positions at this company uh, from design engineer to senior mechanical engineer to product manager, as you mentioned, uh, program manager or uh, uh, product manager and program and <laughs> product manager and project management, I should say, and then sales engineer and now sales manager. <laughs> so we're talking to the right guy. So if there's somebody that knows <laughs> IQ technology, In, uh, integral quenching furnaces is Bob Brock. So just to start, could you give us an introduction to this furnace technology? Uh, so, some people call it uh, IQ, uh, uh, you call it UBQ. Uh, so names are different, but it is pretty much, or batch furnaces. So can, can you just give us an introduction to this type of technology on heat treatment and uh, how it differs from other types of heat treatment furnaces? Yeah, so, so basically it, it's... Uh... Uh, a batch furnace is, is basically what it's called, right? You have a batch, batch. Um, uh, of parts uh, that need uh, heat treatment. Uh, we called it a sealed uh, a batch furnace, which is basically what we call UBQ, which is a universal batch quench system. Um, yeah, these this this is a very uh, old uh, technology. It's been around forever um, uh, since the beginning of heat treatment. Uh, almost uh, typical sizes are 24, 36, 24, uh, 36, 48, 36, and 36, 72, 36. Uh, but the the there's everything in between uh, that we offer. We uh, pretty much customize uh, to the customer's needs. Um, It's basically a, a single uh, batch load that uh, is um, heated and quenched in a um, under atmosphere, typically. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 basically very very simple technology. Uh, the 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 challenge is always to how how you control all the things that happen within within. In the system right so um but at a very basic level it's a it's a batch load that's introduced into a uh, a sealed um unit uh that is heated to a specific temperature for a certain time at a certain carbon potential and then it's quenched in uh, um, oil polymer water uh, there's a lot of different media that can be used in this type of system it's, it's, And, uh, go ahead Well, what are some of the, of the unique features that AFC Holcroft IQ Furnace technology uh, separates uh, apart from the market? I mean, this is is old technology, but it has evolved yeah. over the years with controls, with uh, 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 automation, uh, different sizes, a lot of uh, customization. Uh, do you have a comment in there? Yeah, right. So, um, yeah. So over the years, we've um, um, have a lot. The historical knowledge, as you know, uh, we started back in 1916 at Holcroft, 
And uh, so we have a lot of experience in R&D and testing and different things that we've done over the years to optimize our, our systems. Um, uh, some of the some of the things that uh, we like to uh, really, really um, emphasize on is temperature uniformity, quench flow uniformity, um, carbon control. Um, our system, um, our UBQ is is very uh, very tight sealed system. Uh, uses a pressure control system to kind of regulate uh, when we see difference in pressures. Um, so we have a unique system for that as well. Um, this is um, customers usually uh, state, uh, you know, they they see improved uh, um, uniformity and and uh, metallurgical properties uh, after. Uh, using our system. So the, these are all things that uh, that are good. And um, we we really listen to our customers, take their input very uh, seriously. And we try to uh, improve uh, our system based on their feedback. But we do a lot of in-house R&D, as I spoke about. And uh, we're always uh, pushing the envelope on what's possible. So <laughs> we're, we don't sit idle and, 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 and uh, expect the uh, that the system will uh, sell itself. We're always innovative, innovative in our approach uh, to our customer needs and technology. So if there's a customer or an application, where do you suggest to use batch? Which industries or application benefits most uh, from using UBQ or batch furnaces? Uh, and why these furnaces are particularly suited for these sectors? Yeah, right. So, so batch batch furnaces is, is can do a multitude of different types of parts and in in steels and ferrous and non ferrous parts, um, but gears, fasteners, bearings, forgings, castings, uh, you pretty much can can do all that in a batch type. You, you, furnace. So you can pretty much do a bunch of stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So the 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 it's endless of all the possibilities that you can run in a batch furnace. It's very flexible. Uh, the unique thing about a batch furnace opposed to a continuous type furnace is, is the changeover, right? So I can run part A at a certain temperature, carbon set point, different quench temperatures, um, uh, and then switch over to the next part very quickly. So I think that's the inherent um, benefit you get from batch opposed to continuous. So for a commercial heat treater, this is like the furnace to go for, right? Oh, that, for sure. Um, there there are limitations. Once you get to a certain production level uh, of a certain common part, continuous may become a better option for you. But uh, you usually don't see that until we get into maybe about four UVQs. And then we can talk about uh, maybe that uh, continuous would be a better fit. But we so you will say... Four to one will be like the ratio when it makes sense to go switch to to continuous than batch. Yeah, I I would think so. But we we work closely with our customers to make sure that uh, we're uh, facilitating their needs and uh, for a specific part type. And now, can we talk a little bit about the process control and how it's crucial in the heat treatment? How does uh, this technology contribute to improve process controls and efficiency in operations? Yeah, right. So uh, carbon carbon control is very important. Temperature is very important, and the uniformity of all those are are very uh, critical to so the uh, ca carbon control there. uniformity. And what what was the last one you mentioned? And well, and quench, quench, and quench. quench. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Those right. are like the the critical aspects, right? Right, right. So um, most most systems can do those, and then it's how well you. Uh, use the technology uh, to to make it as clean and uh, as tight as possible. And uh, which which is like the 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 keys that the customer always wants to focus on uh, production throughput uh, mm -hmm. and when the, because this is an in and out single door system, right? Can you tell us a little bit about, about the efficiency and the throughput of the batch? Uh, a lot of people don't know that you can reload while a, 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 a batch of parts is being quenched. So you can actually optimize the process. What are some of the benefits that you see using this technology that most of people do not know? Yeah, so heat recovery is another one, right? Heat so, recovery? Um, yeah, is, is very important uh, to customers and time. 
uh, that uh, the furnace is uh, processing the, the batch of parts. But yeah, like you mentioned, um, our system's designed where you can um, process a load in the furnace while quenching and then reload uh, the furnace uh, uh, while the, 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 the quench process is completing. That's correct. And now everybody's talking about uh, energy consumption and reducing uh, energy as well, energy consumption uh, regarding electric or, or, or gas, right? Uh, right. Well, what is the ra the ratio of uh, IQ furnace uh, that are sold gas and electric, and what uh, trends do customers take to make the decision? And let's talk about the U.S. market. Yeah, right. So in the U.S., gas is still the predominant. Would you say ninety percent, eighty percent? Yeah, ninety percent. Uh, although we do get a lot of inquiries uh, for electric, um, but. Once the, the customer weighs the benefit and, and the cost associated with going to electric um, in North America, at least, uh, it's still pro, um, prevailing uh, gas as the, the, the source of heat. And wh what about uh, the recuperation system? Uh, th there's a big uh, system that there's has to be explained every time that a furnace is sold as a recuperative burner. Uh, yeah, there's right. some input. I mean, because that's a big saving for uh, IQ technology that th most people do not know that yeah. there is, it, it is included already in the technology. Yeah. So our standard batch equipment comes with the recuperative burners. Uh, you can see 25, 35 percent savings uh, using that that technology. Um, but there's a lot of different things that we do for high efficiency burners, P tubes, um, electric. We're even um, uh, with our one of our sister companies uh, developing uh, hydrogen uh, technology for for our systems. But m most of the systems are still U tubes, right? Four U tubes on a batch. Yes, that's our standard offering. Eight inch tubes, uh, which is a lot of surface area. That's where we get an um, increased uh, heat input. Did you envision that that system is going to change over the years? Um, I I. I want to say that uh, um, the the common um, census uh, amongst uh, the the industry in North America is a push to uh, to electric because of the carbon footprint. Um, but but we have proven and we've looked at it many times and we talk to customers. High, uh, electric sometimes is not um, a smaller carbon footprint than you would see with gas. Just be because of where the um, electric power comes from. If it's hydro, nuclear, yeah, that that can be uh, something that a customer would wanna consider, but but typically um, uh, these are coal-fired uh, systems in North America and or a blend of many um, electrical sources. Okay, now let's, let's talk about the quenching process, which is one of the most critical processes in the on an IQ because you 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 heat up, you carburize, you suck, right? But at the end you have to uh, quench on a quench tank. Uh, could you explain the difference, uh, different quenching options available on on a on a UBQ, uh, rather a, a pusher or let's say a pit furnace, and how they impact the, the heat treat parts? Yeah, so so in a typical oil system, you will heat the parts, uh, like you said, we'll soak them for a certain amount of time at a certain carbon potential, and then we'll quench. And and that quench time between the furnace uh, to to hit in the bottom of the the quench system is is very critical, right? So so we try to do that in a very very quick way, and and. Uh, but the, the 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 quench system that we have is is very unique. Uh, we've uh, developed that over many years, uh, working with uh, a very uh, large supplier in the U.S. Um, and we have a a, a quench shoot system that um, uh, directs all the flow from the agitation up through the load at a specific velocity that we've uh, we've developed and um, kind of uh, um, we have an expertise in this area that uh, really has benefited um, our customers. And a big challenge when you transfer the load from the furnace, from the heating chamber to the quench tank is to move uh, 
3,500 pounds uh, at, at a very hot temperature from the, what it's called the, the furnace to the vestibule down. There's a lot of mechanics involved. Uh, how can those mechanics be reliable? Well, what's what's like the catch there? Yeah, right. So so we have a very a reliable system that we use with which we call the rear handler, right? And that's your interface between the vestibule and the furnace. Um, so we have a sealed door design, which is another uh, key factor to um, our tight uniformity. But uh, yeah, so 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 that mechanical rear handler, uh, which is um, um, driven um, by a motor, um, drives the load or pulls the load into the system. Um, it's a very simple, simplistic uh, uh, rear handler head that we use uh, that is pretty fail safe. Um, the, always the challenge is to know where the load is in, in the system, right? So we don't want to um, bring the door down on top of the load and things like that. So we have some some sensors uh, that we use to uh, indicate where where the, the load is in the system. And now that we talked about heating, quenching, and some mechanics, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's called integration. And you can automate integration. Uh, how is uh, how do you believe automation and and integration in manufacturing? Uh, they're transforming the manufacturing market. Uh, how does uh, this furnace technology integrates with automating systems? Because you, then you have a washer, you have a car, and then you can have a couple of furnaces. Uh, what advantages uh, does this bring to the manufacturing uh, manufacturers aiming to improve productivity? Yeah, right. So, um, so automation is a very broad term, right? It can be very right. basic at the furnace. Let, let, let's let, let's <laughs> let's start with that. What's what's automation in furnaces? Because I have seen uh, that confusion as well in the market. Yeah, right. So at a local level, on each system has uh, a set of automation, right? It can be the rear handler and material handling within the system, temperature, carbon control, all those things that are uh, are um, controlled through. Uh, through the PLC, right? Um, so recipe driven. Um, so um, all those type things are uh, local to uh, one specific piece of equipment in a cell. Um, um, and each piece in the system has its uh, own capabilities to uh, have those, those features. Um, when you combine all those into uh, um, what we use as process master, um, you combine all those systems uh, to, be, to be controlled by an automation panel. Uh, so that's kind of remote um, from, from outside the system. Oh, I lost lighting. We have these uh, lighting uh, control in here. And if that's, it a, that's, automation. Moving, that's automation. That's automation. <laughs> it is. So if you're not moving around, the lights go out. So <laughs> my apologies. Um, but uh, so so th those are very basic uh uh, concepts of automation. Uh, we do see a lot of uh, customer requests for automation to simplify, streamline uh, the production of uh, heat treatment. Um, but uh, but in its nutshell, automation is is basically um, where um, at a cell level is where we would um, have an operator uh, automation panel. They would put in some some routings that they would like this specific batch of parts to, to go. And it's a by uh, load or batch of part uh, sequence. So you can have multiple sequence and routings for each uh, basket of parts. And that will control carbon potential, uh, temperatures and times and, and quench speeds and, and so forth. So, are you seeing uh, a, a bigger a bigger interest to automate uh, batch lines than before? Oh yeah, um, for sure. Um, um, there's a lot of um, benefit to, it, but it comes at a cost, right? So, there's a lot sure. of benefit to 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 be able to take the human human factor out of um, timing. When's the load ready? When's the best uh, sequence of operations? Uh, so there's a lot of um, a lot of cost savings down the road. So the return on investment can be significant, uh, but it's the upfront cost that uh, sometimes is the limiting factor. 
I, I want to uh, jump now to a maintenance because it's yeah. also a big a big part of the uh, systems uh, furnaces. Uh, we have uh, we have carbon, we have a lot of heat, and we have to maintain our equipment in order to get good parts. Uh, long term re uh, reliability and ease of maintenance are very important in any facility. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some uh, maintenance engineering design previously uh, in order to have the user be able to maintain its furnace uh, over the years. What yeah. are your comments over there? Yeah, ma maintenance is critical to heat treat. It's a harsh environment. It, it's hard on parts. It's hard on uh uh, on the system, right? We have a lot of heat and, and they're running usually under some corrosive environments. So, right. um, so maintenance is critical to uptime, right? So, um, so most of our features on our UBQ batch furnace are maintenance, uh, friendly designs. Um, like all of our components on the quench tank are, are vertical mounted. Uh, so we don't have to remove oil. Um, all of our furnace components are bung mounted as well to be easily removed. Um, but, uh, but maintenance is, is, is something, uh, that you need to stay up on top of to, to keep your, uh, uptime, uh, at a, uh, proficient level. Um, there are some things that, uh, technologies that, uh, we use to do some predictive, um, maintenance, uh, reminders, um, mm -hmm. that we, 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 uh, we also have something we call cow mode, uh, which can um, run a um, a simulated load um, in your system and and kind of tell you where uh, some of the systems um, are not operating at um, optimal level as uh, commissioned. So, and what what are looking to the future? What advancements or innovations do you foresee? in IQ furnace technology. You mentioned that there's the cow mode. Uh, you can do a lot of things with data. Uh, what, what do you believe we're gonna see over the coming years? Yeah, right. So yeah, that's a, if I could tell the future, uh, I, I I would be uh, maybe not working here, but uh, for, but the automation will continue to grow. It, it's a very will fast moving. That's, yeah, that's right. what you see, that, that, that trend is, it's, it's going to stay it's, this is right right so predictive maintenance automation um what i would call automation complete is where you have a totally automated line and maybe you have some systems for auto burner tuning and and calibration and cow mode and all these things work together to to what i would envision as uh, automation complete and uh w what about uh uh, combustion system. Do you see a uh, 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 change to a, to that trend from gas to electric in, in in the following years, or do you think? Um, I uh, think it has its place. I think in North America, <clears throat> predominantly, it's going to be natural gas for the natural gas. Yeah, for the foreseeable future. So but you go ahead. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is making a uh, compelling. Um, um, movement in in the right direction. Of course, we have to have the infrastructure for that, right? So, so those those things are being looked at, and 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 we do have um, inquiries for that that technology. Bob, thank you for uh, sharing all this with us. Uh, it's been a very uh, it's been great talking to an expert like yourself about uh, <laughs> the the evolution yeah. of IQs. But now let's let let's uh, leave the technical aside, and I do believe that this industry um, mm -hmm. keeps uh, need to be recruiting young engineers. You've been around here for for uh, for a bunch of time, and I I know you personally, and and you love your job, and you love uh, you're very passionate about furnace and systems and mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and uh, what would you what would you tell the young engineers that are entering the market? That are entering the industry, that they want to make a career in in the heat treat industry. Uh, what would be an ad, a personal advice from Bob Rock that yeah. uh, you've been in this industry? You you have seen a bunch of uh, applications, plans, challenges uh, uh, for them to be interested 
to join our industry and make a career out of it? Yeah, well, it's very simple, right? Uh, this industry is very diverse, right? Where do you go to an industry where you're dealing with physics and in 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 thermodynamics and electrical and combustion all into one system, right? So that's very attractive if if you have that uh, mindset, right? Uh, I could go to work at maybe at a a large automobile company and I'm working on one little system for my whole career. Um, but here it's very diverse and it's fast moving and it's changing all the time. And everything we do is customized. Um, so we customize it to the customer's needs. So it's a, it's, it's a challenging, always changing environment. And it's, it's very attractive for, I would think, uh, a young engineer. So thank you, Bob. And thank yeah. you for the audience for tuning in. Stay tuned for more episodes where we dive into the last, last, latest advancements in the heated industry with power players like Bob Brock. Until next time. Thank you so much, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. Thank you.